Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got a Mac Mini here that I'm going to put an SSD in. Now, I haven't done one of these in quite a while and they're a pain in the butt. So uh, let's see how well this goes. Um, I don't know what year this one is. I'll probably link it in the description down below. So yeah. Anyway, we're going to start by removing uh, this bottom panel, which uh, turns and then you kind of got to just get it off somehow because there's nowhere to take it off. <sighs> I'm very jaded about the Mac Mini. There we go. Because I bought a first generation Mac Mini on release day and it was brilliant. It was very good for its time. It was very good value. The top spec decked out with all the optional extras one that I purchased was something like £430, something like that. And, you know, to buy a full-blown Apple with all the trimmings for that kind of money was fantastic. And then as the years went on, the Mac Mini got more expensive and not really any more powerful for the time. And these days, it's just an annoying box. Just, mmm. So that's where we're up to these days. Anywho, um, we've got to take out all of these bits then the drive is down there. So we've kind of got to get all of this out so we can then weasel the drives out from inside. It's very inconvenient. This is one of the classic computers of just Apple seem to make this really awkward to work on for no good reason. Um, like with a, because they just wanted to make it super thin for no reason. If they just managed, like if they'd made this case just a two mil thicker and not had stuff rise up above this line here then they could have just made the whole thing slide out the back and then you'd have full access to everything but no 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 that's far too easy we can't do that but I digress uh, let's take these bits out as well I think this bit needs to come out next so I'm gonna remove that screw as well uh, yeah that's moving can I can I pry? Yep, there we go. That's literally just a plastic cover, just so you can't see the ugly heat pipes. Wow, I sound really jaded today, don't I? <laughs> I'm not doing this on purpose. Um, right, I think this is one of the easy ones, actually, because I think we're most of the way in. Let's take this bit off. Uh, that looks like a bigger screw head. Yeah, I think we're going up to the T, the T8s maybe. Yeah. And those bits. Whoop. Oop careful because the Wi-Fi antenna is still connected. Uh, can I just, yeah I can actually quite easily remove that. Just carefully lift that off. There we go. Right, and here is the hard drive. And that comes out like that. There we go. Whoops, and I tell you what, before you take this guy out, just disconnect it from the logic board. So that guy there was there. Just disconnect that first because I pulled that at a very unhealthy angle there. And if you catch these, um, if you catch these ribbon cables at just the wrong angle, they'll just tear. They'll tear in the blink of an eye before you can say knife. And it's very awkward when that happens. Okay, look at that lovely Toshiba 5400 RPM hard drive. Beautiful. Um, right now, theoretically. If you wanted to be suave, you could buy a, the other SATA connector ribbon from eBay and then fit both drives, your SSD and your hard drive, in this thing at the same time. That wasn't in the mandate for this particular job, so I'm not doing that. But if you wanted to, you could do that and just convert your Mac Mini into a dual drive machine. If you have a dual drive Mac Mini already because you spec'd it as such from the factory, because the Mac Mini, Apple kind of build the Mac Mini as being usable as a home server as well. So it's available from the factory with a dual drive setup, I believe, um, as a home server type 
deal. I don't know. It wasn't a real... Yeah, you know. People started using the Mac Minis for that. That's what I used mine for back in the day. But just, you don't need dual drives for that, really. So, uh uh, anyway, where was I? So yeah, uh, if you do have a, dr a, a dual drive one already, I think the drives are kind of bolted together with a with a bracket or something, and you have to get them both out at the same time. It's a lot more awkward, but the principle is the same. Um, so yeah, this one wasn't too bad. I'm sh I think the slightly newer ones are a bit more awkward than this, but either way, we've done all right. Let's grab our uh, let's grab our replacement SSD, or rather our new SSD, and put that in. Okay, I'm putting in a Crucial MX500, which is my SSD of choice for general repairs. And now and then I get snarky comments on using Crucial SSDs. People are just like, oh, a shitty SSD kind of thing. And um, the answer to that is no, not really. Um, the Crucial MX500 is a very good SSD. It performs very well. The only, uh, you know, it's not a budget SSD. It's a good value SSD, but it's not a budget SSD like a Kingston SSD now or something like that. Um, the only thing that is going to be better than an MX500 would be something like a Samsung Evo. Um, and you have to remember that we're on a SATA connection here, which means we're, we're bus limited to f about 550 megs per second. Um, now, the Samsung SSDs will give you slightly better 4K operations, but not really by much. And arguably, they'll give you slightly more maximum IOPS um, throughput as well. But you're not going to notice that unless you're doing really heavy-duty workstation stuff, like running 10 VMs at the same time and stuff like that. The average user will not see the difference. The only time where I would actually consider using Samsung SSDs is when you're going down the NVMe route. And uh, NVMe, which needs to be on an M2 card, that is not even worth it unless you have multiple SSDs in your computer. Because, um, uh, you know, if it's no good having a SSD in your PC that can read and write at, you know, two or three gigabit gigabytes per second if that's the only thing in the computer that can operate at those speeds. You know, again, what's the point in having a super fast SSD when nothing can talk to it at the speeds that it's operating at? Um, and fun fact, when I built my PC, as you can see, our SSD is now in, so I'm going to start putting all of this stuff back in as well. When I built my gaming computer, I put an MX500 M2 in it. So that's an MX500 M2 card, which is... It's an M2 card with a SATA controller. So it's basically an M2 uh, just for the form factor, not for performance. Uh, and then at one point, uh, the Samsung 9 970 Evo went on special offer. It was Black Friday or something like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy one of those and have the pimp value for NVMe. Uh, so I bought one and I fitted it and I couldn't tell the difference. Genuinely couldn't tell the difference. You know, I'm a discerning individual. I know performance when I see it. And on the on my standard gaming rig, you know, so I'm not running lots of VMs or anything like that, just on a standard gaming desktop, I could not tell the difference between the Crucial MX500 and the Samsung. So that's why I say I don't think it's worth it. Um, so that's why I fit Crucial MX500s to people's computers because the Samsung drives, they're more expensive for, as far as I'm concerned, no visible gain. I'm not saying they're bad drives, I'm just saying that you may as well save your money. Right, these two screws here, these go all the way through and grab hold of the drive. And my drive is kind of sagging slightly, so I'm just turning it over, and what I need to do is just, I need to tap the computer slightly so the drive just sits down. And so when I put this screw in, it picks up the thread. Once I get one in, the other one will be really easy. There we go. So now that one's, now this one has screwed into the bottom of the drive. It's pulled the drive up. So now this screw will go straight into the bottom of the SSD there as well. And that stops your hard drive from flapping about in the breeze. I don't, this doesn't feel like it's on properly because that screw put up a fight and that's not aligned. Is it just really finicky?
Let's just leave that one loose but threaded. And then see if we can get that guy in. That doesn't want to sit right. I don't like it. I don't like the way it feels. Oh, there we go. I've got it right. So the end of the, the end of this mesh bit should sit just across the top of the rim there. Let's give me give you a close up just so you can see how it should be sitting when it's on properly. Because when you get it on properly, it will look right. There you go. That's what it should look like when it's in position. Okay, now we'll put in our plastic spacer thing. And I'm just going to look down the side there. And you can see there, you see that screw post? That screw post needs to go into that slot there. So that's what we're aiming for when we put this guy back in. And now the cooling fan can go back on. And I'm just going to make sure I connect that first. There we go. And additionally, now would be an excellent time to bump up your RAM slightly. How much have we got in here? That's a 2 gig. We've got 4 gigabytes in this, which is kind of on the low side, but... I believe this one is just being used as a media server, so meh, that's okay. Right, and now this guy can go back on. So we'll align that with the white dot, and then spin it around to the black dot. There we go, and we're all done. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a clean install of MacOS on here. Um, no idea if this thing will take Mojave, probably will, if not we'll put High Sierra on it. Then once I've done that, I'll then run the Migration Assistant to import all of the user data from the old hard drive on there. And uh, I've, I've demonstrated this process in other videos before. Um, let me think, when was the last time I did it? I think I did it on an iMac previously. So if you check for my iMac SSD conversion videos, I cover this process in there. Past that, we're all done here. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.